up nerds my name is leslie smith welcome or welcome back to the nerdy narrative this is a channel i use to talk with you about all of the books that i read i read in a ton of different genres there's always a variety of things you're going to hear about here my top three favorite genres are science fiction fantasy and horror i also like to pick up books that are classics literary fiction nonfiction, and i also have a healthy love for the picture books such as comics and manga but for today's episode of fun it is friday that means it is time for my weekly reading wrap up where i share with you what i've read what I am still reading and what I plan to read next. As far as what I've read, I did finish Tagana by Guy Gabriel Kay and this book was amazing. When I checked in with you last week, I'd only read a few chapters and I wasn't quite sure about it. That all changed very, very quickly. This author is able to write character interactions in a way that's not like many other authors I've read. Actually, the only one I can think of that is close to him to compare him with is Robin Hobb. I still think Hobb is just a little bit better at it, but this is only my first book by him. I think it was his debut novel. I'm excited to read more by him. He wrote a beautiful, beautiful story. I'm just amazed at what he was able to do, especially with my emotions. I was so tied up in many of these characters some of them I absolutely hated. They were terrible. Guy Gabriel K showed me where these characters were, what their motivations were, what their driving forces were. He put me in their shoes and I found myself grieving for them, feeling sorry for them. And it's like, no, these, these are bad people. You need to remember that. But it's still, I was just very sympathetic to their plight. When you can write that way about a character that's a terrible person but you made me feel sorry for him like <sighs> there were so many times that i didn't know what i wanted to happen with characters i didn't know if i wanted them to do the right thing or did i want them to do the not right thing and follow their heart's desires i mean it was I can't wait to read it again. I absolutely cannot wait to read it again. It is a very dense read. I will tell you that. This one I would put on par with like a Malazan book. You want to read a little bit of it a day. The chapters are super long. Sagana to me, in order for me to get the most out of the reading experience, I listen to the audiobook while reading along physically. And even so, I still slowed that audiobook down because there's a lot to take in. There is so much that's happening that I just couldn't speed it up. I had to take it slow. So know that going in, that it is a slower, denser read, but the payoff is absolutely worth it. The only other book that I finished this week is a novella, an arc that I received from Cemetery Gates Media, which is Only the Stains Remain by Ross Jeffrey. This book actually comes out July 20th, so it's right around the corner. And I didn't mean to read it this week, but what happened was it came in the mail. What do you do when you get a new book? You open it up and you kind of flip through the pages and take a look for any art, look at the chapter headings and things of that nature. And I came across a page that really struck me and it made me sit down and binge this book. I binged it the day that I got it. And the page that is in here that caused that binging is he quoted a line from one of my favorite books I've read this year. The quote that he used is from The Wastelands, which is book three from the Dark Tower series by Stephen King. And the quote is, beating heroin is child's play compared to beating your childhood. And he got me. He got me with that quote. I had to read this book. Just what significance did that particular quote have on this book? I just kept thinking about it the whole time. I walked the dogs, was making dinner, had dinner, took a shower. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to read this book. And I sat down and I benched it. And it is absolutely 
beautiful. Prior to Only the Stains Remain, I've only read Juniper by Ross Jeffrey and I really enjoyed that book. I want to say I gave that one four stars last year and I'm about to read another one by him. I'm really excited about it. It's called Tone. The level of writing in this one was top notch. It does come with a content warning page in the front. The content warning explains that the subject of child abuse is contained within this novella as well as torture. The author does explain he broached these matters as tastefully as he could, but that he did not shy away from them either. The story is about two brothers and what happens in the aftermath of the death of their mother when they are both very young. The father basically just checks out and the brothers of the mother move in. And that's when everything goes sideways for the brothers, which are named Kyle and Jude. And Kyle is the elder brother and he does everything he can to protect his baby brother, Jude. The younger brother, Jude, is the narrator for our story. And it's equal parts of him going down memory lane about what happened as a child and then flips over to him as an adult and how his mind has turned to vengeance for what he and his brother endured as children. Honestly, I admire the courage of Ross Jeffrey in putting this in print and getting it out there. But for me, it gave me an intense feeling of satisfaction. So those are the only two books I actually completed this week. I am still working on a few. The first one being East of Eden by John Steinbeck. This is a read along that is taking place over on the Literary Discourse Discord. Link is in the description box down below. But this read along is hosted by the fellas from the Codex Cantina, Una and Crypto, and myself. We will have a live stream at the end of the month. I believe July 29th sounds right. But this book has been so enjoyable. I mean, it was just an absolute sneak attack. I didn't expect to like it so much. I thought I would enjoy it. The whole premise let me know it was going to be one that I enjoyed because I love fictional retellings of the books of the Bible. I don't know why, I just do. I didn't know it was gonna be such a page turner. I mean, I'm over, I'm over halfway done with it. I had fully intended to just read maybe 20 or 30 pages a day. I thought it was going to be one that I was going to have to make myself sit down and get my daily quotient of pages read. Absolutely not. I look forward to picking this one up. It's actually the first book I pick up every day because I'm so excited to get back into the story. It is so much fun. It's so much fun. It's so good. Some of the fun is just determining what sections of this story are connections to the Bible. You know, we're still not quite sure who all they may be. And then the other part of it is just the story. It's not a it's it's not a one-to-one -one actual retelling of the book of Genesis. There's a whole lot of extra stuff thrown in that is just amazing. There's one particular character that I've determined has to be Satan, the serpent. And I am so ready for this sneaky snake to get their due. Cynthia, you know who it is I'm talking about. You know, we've already talked about it in the comments, but I really thought that I was going to get what I wanted in this morning's chapter, but alas, I didn't. So I think I'm going to have to read a little extra in this one today to see if maybe it happens in the next chapter. I feel like something big is about to happen with that particular storyline. But all that to say, this is a fantastic book. I honestly think it's gonna take second place as far as my favorite classic. While I'm loving it, it still can't replace Their Eyes Were Watching God for me. I mean, I do still have around 300 pages left. It's possible something crazy could happen and take that number one spot, but I don't think that's gonna happen. And I also started Best Served Cold by Joe Amber Crombie. This one I'm taking really slow. I'm only about 100 pages in. This one I'm buddy reading with the Cat Lady Book Nook Penny. We have both really enjoyed being back in the first law world. And like I mentioned, I'm only 100 pages in. It's still very early. But I've only run across one character that I know from the First Law trilogy so far. I don't know if there will be more. Um, I've just 
heard very vague things about this little standalone. It seems to be the favorite of the standalones, but I don't want to get too nosy about looking into reviews and stuff just in case something gets spoiled. This one has that feel of just coming home. I love the banter between the characters. I love the way Joe Abercrombie writes his characters. I love the banter. It just feels genuine. I relate to it. It just sounds like how I feel. I would talk to my friends if I was in this world doing the things these characters are doing. I just really appreciate it. It's just one of those enjoyable reads. I know I will be rereading these books over the years many, many times. And then the last book I'm working on, I started last night. It's a novella by Beverly Lee called The House of Little Bones. And this one comes out September 21st of this year. And what happened with this one is the cover. This one, 100% would be a cover buy for me. Author Ross Jeffrey actually tagged me on Twitter when Beverly Lee was looking for people to review the book. He tagged me to see if I was interested and when I saw the cover, I 100% instantly replied to the author and asked for a copy. Beverly Lee was so kind, she sent me a copy right away and then I went and read the book description and I was like, oh, well, I guess I'll be starting this one this evening and I read about 30% of it last night. I really intended to finish it. It's a novella, but what happened is I met a character and that character alerted me that I might would need to wait until daylight hours to finish it. So I will definitely be finishing this book today as soon as I get done filming for you guys because I just need to know. It has a really great premise. It's about an author, David Lansdowne, very, very popular in Britain as a horror writer. And what's hilarious is he writes all this horror, but he doesn't believe any of it. Well, he lands himself in hot water. He's in the midst of a scandal and not in a good way. I'm not exactly sure how old David is, but I wanna say he's either middle-aged or approaching middle age, And he gets caught out with his best friend's son. Now the son is of legal age and everything, but it's still a scandal because the son is number one, David's best friend. And number two, David's best friend is also his publisher. David is really getting dragged in the media about this relationship. So he hauls off to some distant remote place in Britain. This house has a story. A couple built it. They lived there less than a month. Things were happening. They bailed. Now remember, David is a skeptic. He doesn't believe anything about the supernatural is real. So you can probably guess David's gonna get in this house and things are gonna start happening. There's a ton of suspense. There's a ton of things mentioned or hinted at that allows the reader's imagination to run wild. And then I met this particular character and I'm not gonna name this character, but I have a feeling that I'm going to be lumping this character into the same category as Mildred from The Patience of a Dead Man. We'll see. Like I said, I definitely plan to finish this one today. It'll be my last book that I finished for the Olympic Readathon. So I will be updating you guys next week for sure. That takes care of everything I've read and what I'm still reading. Now, as far as what I'm still reading, I'm only halfway done with East of Eden. I've just barely started with Best Served Cold. I will finish the novella today. So that means I have a spot or two open to start some new reads. Now for the Indie Accords Readathon, if you haven't seen that TBR, I'll put it in the cards for you, but I have a lot of smaller books, short story collections and novellas. I'm going to start with those first and get those knocked out because that's how I love to do readathons. I start with my tiniest books first. That way I get that feeling of accomplishment and it gets me excited. So I will be starting Anoka by Shane Hawk. This is a collection of short stories that take place in a little town outside of Anoka, Minnesota, dubbed the Halloween capital of the world. I am very excited to read these. This one's a tiny collection, so I also expect to be able to knock out another collection of gothic tales that are included in Nocturne by H.B. Diaz. And again, another little collection, so I will then go Go into Things Have Gotten Worse Since We Last Spoke by Eric LaRocca. This is a novella I have heard so much about. I've heard that he really outdid himself on his writing. 
which is already fantastic. I am really excited to read this one and talk about it with my friends. All of my other friends have already read it, so I'm excited to be able to read it and discuss it with them. And then my last small read of the month will be The Last Shimmer by Sage Hyatt. I am so excited to read this one. I can't wait. Sage is the daughter of Ryan Hyatt, who I'm also reading his book this month, The Psychic Memoirs, but she wrote this when she was 10. I can't wait to read this and see what I think. So that'll take care of all of my little reads and collections. I will also be kicking off my reread for The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones. And this one is a Discord wide buddy read. So if you haven't read this book and you want to join me on Discord and read it with all of us, I have a link in the description box down below. Come by and join us. But this buddy read is a read at your own pace. I don't break it down into to this many chapters per day. You just read it as you like. And when you want to come in and discuss something in the Discord about it, just make sure and mark your spoilers for those that might not be to the chapter you're at. While we're on the subject of rereads, my next reread will be The Patience of a Dead Man by Michael Clark. This is the group read for team horror, thriller, mystery for the Indie Accords. I am the team captain of that team. This was the book that I chose for my team. I can't wait to get started on this book. It's my favorite haunted house story ever. So I can't wait to see if I get to relive that thrill again. And that is a wrap on this week of reading for me. That's everything I read, what I'm still reading, and what I plan to read next. Are any of you guys doing the Any Accords readathon? Are you crazy like me going right from one readathon to another readathon? I know I've seen a lot of you join the Any Accords and you're on my team. So I'm looking forward to participating in that with you guys. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching today. If you like the video, don't forget to hit that like button. If you are not subscribed, I would love to have you join the Nerdy Narrative family. Click that subscribe button. Join the rest of us on the Nerdy Narrative Discord if you would like to support the channel. I do have a Patreon linked in the description box down below. I hope your morning has gotten off to a great start. I hope the rest of your day is fantastic. I hope your weekend is wonderful. We got a three day weekend for those of us in the States that celebrate July 4th. I hope it is filled with sunshine, family, food and friends and lots of time to read. Have a great weekend. I'll see you in the next one.